All right, great. Um, we'll be moving on to our next speaker. So with us, we have Senator Richard Briggs from Tennessee. So uh, Senator uh, Briggs was first elected to the Knox County Commission in 2008 and represented District 5 in Knox County. In 2014, he ran and won the election for the Tennessee State Senate District 7 in Knox County and was reelected to a second term to the Senate in 2018. In the Tennessee Senate, Dr. Briggs has served on the Finance Committee, the Transportation Committee, and the Health Committee, as well as the, being the chairman of the Senate Ethics Committee. In 2020, Senator Briggs assumed duties as the chairman of the Senate, State, and Local Government Committee. Dr. Briggs earned his BS degree from Transylvania University in Lexington, Kentucky in 1978, and upon graduation from the University of Kentucky College of Medicine in 1978, Dr. Briggs entered active military service and rose to the ranks to become a full colonel. I uh, also want to note that Dr. Briggs sponsored the Counseling Compact Bill in Tennessee, uh, that bill being introduced in February of 2021 and enacted in May of 2022. So with that, we'd like to welcome Senator Briggs. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I thought I would talk about just uh, several of the factors that uh, helped us get this bill through the uh, state Senate and ultimately through the legislature in general. And, uh, you know, I think the first of those is, is that we had experience with some of these uh, compacts in the past. I've got my notes here. Uh, because Tennessee already belonged to the Nurses Compact, Speech and Audiology, Speech Pathology and Audiology, uh, occupational therapy, uh, physical therapy, uh, the medical, and, uh, uh, and the uh, EMT uh, compact. So we had some experience with these uh, even before. Uh, the second issue that uh, helped us uh, get this through, we have a very large military base in uh, Middle Tennessee. It's, they call it Fort Campbell, Kentucky, but it's actually uh, more in Tennessee than in Kentucky. And uh, we had a letter from the Assistant Secretary of Defense in support of this. And actually that's where the uh, requests for these compacts have come from uh, because there's many military families that move into the area. And uh, sometimes their spouses can take months uh, before they can have their licenses work through the ordinary system prior to where we had these compacts. And, and I guess I would say the, uh, the largest hurdle uh, that we initially had, uh, you, as you mentioned, it took us two years to get this uh, through. It was presented in 2021 and then we got it in 2022. There was a, uh, it was a very small fiscal note on it. And uh, in Tennessee, because we're a very conservative uh, fiscal state, uh, we were finally able to get that removed uh, and, and, and then quite frankly, it went through very quickly. We did have the bill carried both in the House and the Senate by myself as a uh, retired uh, military officer in the Senate. And then we had a veteran carry the bill in the House. Uh, and, uh, and we really did not have too much trouble getting this through once the, uh, you know, once the fiscal notes, note came off of it uh, through an amendment in 2021. Great, thank you, Senator Briggs. Um, does anyone have any questions for the Senator? Feel free to put it in the chat or again, raise your hand there. Uh, Senator Briggs, one of the things that, that I saw from bill being passed in Tennessee is that uh, there was there were no nay votes um, across from that. Um, so can you kind of speak to why do you think that is, it, it may be just kind of reiterating some of the points that you had made earlier, but why do you think there was, um, you know, such unanimous support for, for the Council and Compact in Tennessee? You know, again, I think it was, uh, there were several reasons. One, uh, and I do recall when we had some of these earlier compacts and some of the resistance came from the board members concerned, uh, were we gonna have the same quality would be were there if there were problems uh, in other states with, uh, with people, what would be the process, uh, for instance, to prevent malpractice or some of those. But we had had, uh, we had had, uh, we had worked through most of those with, uh, I'm looking at my notes again, one, two, three, four, five. There were about seven, I believe it uh, was uh, uh, previous compact. So some of those issues we had worked through already. I think that was a factor is the experience uh, that we had had uh, with compacts saying that they indeed did work and some of the concerns 
uh, uh, turned out to be more theoretical than real. The second issue is, is that we're a conservative, uh, we support the military very well. And the letter that we had from the Assistant Secretary of Defense, uh, I think definitely made a difference. And then the third reason I think was uh, uh, simply because uh, we, have, uh, we had veterans that were the sponsors of the bill and, uh, and, and to do something to support the veterans to provide continuity of care uh, for, the, you know, for people coming in and the veterans coming in, I think made a big difference. We're like a lot of states, we, we have a lack of personnel, medical personnel and healthcare providers which made it an easier sell also. So I think, uh, I think really those uh, four factors uh, seem to be what made the bill go through. It, it really went through very easily once we got the fiscal note taken off. All right, great, thank you, Senator Briggs. Any other questions for the Senator? Hi, Senator Briggs. I do have a, a brief question. I'm also a CSG, but I was wondering, did you guys encounter any difficulties other than the issue with the fiscal node? Was there anything else that really came up that you had to work through during that process? Uh, not really on this particular bill. I, I had carried some of the other uh, compact bills, and I know the earlier ones, uh, and these are, are relatively long bills because they include, uh, you know, they include so much in them. And the other bills, uh, there, there were a lot of questions that came up, uh, you know, that, that, that really had to do with who had the authority to do what. There was a question. Uh, there's always a question because, as you know, in the state legislatures, uh, we protect very much, you know, our rights and our independence to states to do things is were we ceding uh, too much authority to a uh, uh, you know, to a general, uh, uh, but by the time we got to these bills, most of those issues had been worked out on the previous contact, uh, compacts that we had been involved with, and and so on. Uh, when it came to uh, when it came to this one, uh, we really didn't. We, we did have our uh, you know our boards that normally issue the licenses that review it, and we worked very closely with them. And uh, and once that they gave us the okay that this looked look good to them and that they were satisfied with it, uh, it, it really went through very smoothly. Thank you. Okay, great. And seeing no other questions in the chat or anyone having their hand raised, I uh, would like to thank Senator Briggs for his time and sharing the story from Tennessee. Um, really appreciate your, your uh, work and, and the experience shared here today. Good, thank you.